Hello everyone, Hong here and welcome back to the channel and my follow-up video of my new Apple M1 powered iMac. If you've not seen my unboxing and first power-up video, the link is in the description. In this video, I'll be sharing with you 7 tips, tricks and settings that I use for my Mac OS, making it a more enjoyable experience. I'll also be sharing my 21 day journey that I've had so far with my iMac and some of the things that I'm loving about it and some of the things that I'm not. Let's go! So my M1 iMac is equipped with the 512 GB SSD hard drive and I was not willing to spend an additional $300 to bump it up to one terabyte. And if you want to bump this up to two terabyte, you got to spend an additional $900, which in my personal opinion is just a little bit too expensive. So for those of you who are keen on getting the new iMac or the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or even the iPads, my advice to you is to get one of these, SSD portable hard disk drives, because they're a lot more affordable. They range between 250 to 350, depending on the brand, model, and size. This two terabyte one I got cost me about $300. So it's a lot more affordable as compared to upgrading it when you purchase your computer. As some of you already know, my Mac computers are mostly used for work. That means video editing on Final Cut Pro X or photo editing with Adobe Lightroom which means there are programs or apps that are preloaded into your iMac that you will never use. I know that I will never use some of these apps, taking up valuable space and storage capacity. So one of the first things I do whenever setting up a new computer is to delete all those unwanted programs and apps. With the new Mac OS, this is just as easy as deleting apps from your cell phone. You basically head over to your applications page Click and hold onto the app you want to delete, then click on the little X on the corner of the icon to uninstall. The GarageBand app, for example, takes up 948 megabytes, and the iMovie app takes up 2.42 gigabytes. Just by uninstalling these two apps that I will never use will save me close to 3.4 gigabytes. Another nifty little trick I love about macOS is its ability to scale up or scale down your desktop space. For me, having more real estate on the display is always a good thing, especially when it comes down to editing videos. To do this, just head on over to the System Preferences, hit Display, and select Scale. You can then choose to either scale up or scale down your entire display. This is also a useful feature for those of you who may wish to have things show up a little bit larger. When it comes to workflow, the Mac OS has this brilliant little tool that allows you to select all or select some files and have them all renamed at one go. Basically, a batch renaming tool. And that is very, very useful, especially for photographers and videographers. Simply select the files you want to batch rename, click on rename, and replace the specific word or words with what you would prefer. And this is one of the many tools that I absolutely love about the Mac OS. Another awesome tool to help with workflow, Stats. Like many of you, I take thousands of screenshots on a daily basis. And unless you're really diligent with renaming all your files, which I am not, then Stacks would help you quickly and easily put together all your relevant files into a stack. To activate this, all you need to do is click on View while you're on your desktop and select Use Stacks. This will immediately group your files. This allows you to have a cleaner looking desktop environment while also helping you keep things better organized. A super useful tool for messy, messy people like me. Now the next tip is also a tool that I use on a daily basis. No longer are you required to use crazy advanced photo editing software just to get the proper screenshot. Just by tapping Command, Shift, 5 at the same time, you'll open up a set of screenshot tools 
that will allow you to take precise screenshot images of what you have on the screen. This tool also allows you to perform screen recordings as well, making it a super handy tool. One really cool feature I recently found existed was that the language button on the keyboard that allows for quick language changes for those of you who type in multiple languages can also be customized as a shortcut for emojis and symbols. For this, you just head on over to the system preferences, click on keyboard, and then assign whatever shortcut you want to the keyboard. I have found this feature to be very, very useful, especially for someone like me, because I use tons of emojis on a daily basis, regardless of its formal correspondence or informal correspondence. A final tip that I really, really love about the Mac OS is the control center at the top right corner of the desktop. I believe the layout and style is copied over from iPhone iOS. If you recall in my unboxing video, I am a hardcore Mac OS supporter, loyal one, but I'm not an iPhone iOS user. So this function to me might not be the newest for some of you, especially if you're already on an iPhone, but for me, it's pretty darn new. And to make things even more fluid, you can actually customize your top menu bar with small little shortcut icons from this control center. All right, so those are the seven tips, tricks, and settings that I use very frequently and something that I love about the Mac OS. What about you guys? Are there additional functions that you guys use or just have to live with? Share them with me in the comments. I would love to check them out. Okay, moving on to my three-week review of my new M1-powered Apple 24-inch iMac. It is still very easy to use. Mac OS is still intuitive as ever, if not even better, compared to previous generations. And considering how I upgraded from an 11-year-old Intel Core i5 iMac to this, well, the speeds and the performance are just staggering. Let's start with speed. At the end of my unboxing video, I mentioned in a little note on the side that it took this computer about 6 minutes to render and export that 13 minute 4K video. Now that is significantly faster, and I mean significantly faster than my 2015 MacBook Pro, which is my main computer I use for video editing. Obviously, because my 11 year old iMac will simply just crash and die every time I try to load a 4K video into it. Another thing I'm loving about this iMac is the fact that it is so thin. I mean, just look at this. It measures only one centimeter in thickness and yet offers not just a 4.5K retina display with support for one billion colors. It also has a very powerful computer inside. In fact, there are monitor screens out there that are thicker and heavier that costs more than this. Having said that, the fact that it is so light, weighing in at about 4.46 to 4.48 kilograms depending on your specs and models, there is something that I would consider to be a flaw. Now, if this was a laptop or a tablet or a cell phone, then sure, lighter is better, right? Because you want it to be portable. But it's a desktop computer. You don't want it that light. As you can see, when you're tilting the screen or when you're plugging in cables to the ports at the back, the whole computer moves. While I don't think this is a deal breaker, it does get a little annoying. For the next segment, I'm going to be using the Max built-in microphone and camera. Well, here we are. What you see right now and what you hear is straight up from the iMac, no edits to the audio and no edits to the video. And I dare say that it is pretty clear in terms of video quality and also the audio quality. This camera provides up to 1080p capabilities and also with Apple's larger sensor, improves on its low light quality. 
For all the video conferences that I've been having these past 21 days, I have had no complaints about the video and audio clarity. As for the built-in speakers, well, let's be honest, it ain't gonna rock your house down. But it's six speaker high fidelity system with force cancelling woofers does a fantastic job with a clear separation between lows, mids and highs. It is also equipped with smart wide stereo surround sound as well as spatial audio when playing music or videos with Dolby Atmos. In conclusion, I'm gonna say that the M1 powered Apple iMac has delivered and probably will continue to deliver flawlessly, no questions asked. And I can see myself using this for quite a few years. Maybe not 11 years like my previous iMac, but yeah, definitely for a couple of years. Well, that's all folks. Thank you so much for joining me. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them. And if you guys are already on this new M1 series of computers from Apple, let me know what you guys think about them as well because I would love to hear your feedback. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and if you've liked the video, like the video. Take care of yourself. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.